called a meeting to order this Monday, March 18th, or Mar April 1st, 2019, in the Board of Works and Safety. The first up item on the agenda is approval of the minutes from the August, March 18th meeting. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of the March 18th meeting as presented. I'll second that motion and call for the vote. All those in favor, aye. Aye. Motion carried. <clears throat> Next item on the agenda is an order to demolish 111 Franklin Street and we're to have a public hearing at this meeting at this time. Uh, Building Commissioner, City of Michigan City. Oh. I'm not sure if there's anyone here that wants to address it. What we intend on doing at this point is after negotiating a bit with the the, the owner of the structure, we intend on asking that it's this, the hearing be delayed just for a short time. To a special time or you have time to be determined? 30 days. And, and of course, you're welcome to have your welcome. Is there to anybody here present right. wish to speak at this time? If not... What is the purpose of the delay? They are attempting to work with us regarding a time frame for actually making the structure a usable structure. Yeah. <coughs> Sue, is, is anybody here from that's an owner of 111 Franklin that, Street? Oh. Are you going to speak on it? I thought that Mr. Adams or Mark Balutis were going to be here, but... How are you? Okay. Good. How are you? Mike Connor, 1130 Tryon Road, Michigan City, Indiana. Um, I represent uh, Mr. Adams and BFLP Finance, who have entered into a, an agreement with the city uh, for strict performance on uh, bringing the property into compliance, uh, full compliance with all city codes uh, within a short amount of time. That document I think is still being negotiated between the principals and the city planner at this time. Uh, they've uh, asked Sue to come in and speak on uh, that on, on uh, the city planner's behalf to grant a, a period of time to perfect that document for approval by this board. Happy to answer any questions. We've been here before. Uh, we have not. Well, you have, sir. I have not. You've never seen me here before. I don't okay. know. I, I'm but confused. I've heard this statement. Yes. I'm confused. I don't know what this board would be approving, though, um, for document-wise. I don't think it would be this board. It may be between just right. your office. Um, but my, my, I guess my question is, does the owner agree to the continuance, the 30 days continuance? Yes. Which is, I, what, yes. Yes, I'm here okay. on his behalf. Okay. I, I just want to say there, there has been no agreement entered. So, you know, I just want to make sure to clear it's that up. Still the said, entered into an agreement. No, that, that has not happened yet. Okay, the cart's a little bit in front of the horse there, but I anticipate that to happen. I think the, I think the, the owner is Adams Property Holdings, LLC. That That's is correct. the owner, correct? Are there any other owners right now? There, there's no other owners at this time. Okay. There... There is an agreement between Adams and BFLP Finance to invest the money required to bring the property up to code. So if this is continued 30 days, it would just be the first Board of Works meeting in um, May. Sorry, I won't be here. What's the Board's pleasure? I'll make a motion to delay the uh, hearing for 30 days while the owner um, <coughs> speaks to the city about moving forward on a, a project. I'll second that motion. If there's no further discussion, I call for the vote. All those in favor, aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is a request for a street closure by Asplen Tree Experts is requested a closure of eastbound lane of Cool Spring Avenue east of Ohio Street to Hoyt Street for the purpose of 
tree trimming by for Nipsco Lines on Wednesday, April 3rd from 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. Anybody here representing the petitioner? Lieutenant, or Captain, excuse me. Good morning, Captain Jeff Lineski, Traffic Division. I spoke with a representative of the tree service last week. Uh, they're actually going to be performing some maintenance on the trees right at the intersection of uh, Cool Spring and Ohio Street. And it's a pretty sharp curve, and the only way they can safely take down those branches and trees is to blow, close one block of um, Earl Road. Or, I'm sorry, Cool Spring Ave. It'll be closed right around the curve there just for eastbound traffic. So westbound traffic will still be open. We would recommend approval. Okay, thank you. Anybody else wish to? If not, I'll entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to approve the request for street closure of the eastbound lane, Cool Spring East of Ohio Street to Hoyt Street on 4 3 from 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. to trim trees. Further discussion, I call for the vote. All those in favor, aye. aye. Motion carries. Next item on the agenda is request another request for street closure by Tim Johnson from Next Modular. Requesting the closure of Lakeshore Drive between North Lake Ave and Louisiana, Louisiana Ave on Monday, April 29th from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. for the placement of a modular at 411 Lakeshore Drive. Yes, sir. Good morning. Name and address? Tim Johnson, address 2000 Elkhart Road, Goshen, Indiana. Next Monday Road, LLC. And this is the same thing you did a year ago? Similar, yes, sir. I, I wasn't involved a year ago. This oh. is my first time. Okay. Um, however, this uh, particular request does offer some additional streets that are closer, so we don't have a full closure, maybe more of a detour type of situation. Um, so there will be signage? There will be, I have a plan to put barricades in the street and people to direct traffic for the block difference than running down Lakeshore. Have them slide, move over to Colfax via of, uh, Louisiana or Lake Avenues. So, um, but yes, I will have blockades, some blocking, and people directing traffic as well. Captain, have you looked at this? So as he stated, this area does have an alternate route that can be used by people to get east and west on Lakeshore Drive. So as long as they have the required flagman out there, we would recommend approval. Okay. Any further discussion? <coughs> well, I'll entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to approve the request for street closure by Tim Johnson, next modular, for the closure of Lakeshore Drive between North Lake and Louisiana Avenues on Monday, April 29th from 8 until 5 p.m. for the placement of a modular at 411 Lakeshore Drive. And insurance. Updated insurance. Oh, we did get it. It says needed. I'll second that motion. I'll be just like. Okay. You okay? Mm -hmm. If there's no further discussion, I'll entertain a motion. This we have it. Okay, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor, aye. aye. Motion carries. Thank, Thank you very you. much. That's a bad boy. Next item is another request for street closure by Bruce Ro Woodruff from Woodruff and Sons requesting an extension. Yes. Oh, excuse me, I missed one. Request to use the park. Shane Watson from Michigan City Main Street Association is requesting to use the Westcott Park. For the annual Swale Music Festival from Friday, June 7th, 2019 to June 9th from 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. with the festival being held on Saturday, June 9th, 8th. Yes, sir. Good morning. Um, I'm Shane Watson, 210 Dewey Street, Michigan City, Indiana. Um, Vice President of uh, Michigan City Main Street Association. We had the same event last year. We're pretty much looking to do the same thing again this year. Um, in regards to the event itself will be on June 8th. It was the date that preceded it for setup, and the day afterwards for breakdown. We don't have control over the park, though, right? Yeah, we do. Mm -hmm. I thought that was the park. Mm -hmm. Nope. Okay. Any further discussion? 
Captain? Uh, there is a request for a few officers to work this event as security. We provided officers last year, and we have no problem doing it again this year, so we recommend approval of the request. Okay. If there's no further discussion, I'll entertain a motion. Um, I'll make a motion to approve the request for Main Street uh, to uh, set up and uh, have a uh, swale music festival for Friday, June 7th to Sunday, June 9th from 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. with a festival being held on June 8th. And this is subject to uh, presentation of the Certificate of Insurance to the Clerk's Office. Support. Discussion. I call for the vote. All those in favor, aye. aye. Motion carries. Next item on the request agenda is a request for street closure by Bruce Woodruff of Woodruff and Sons for requesting the extension of the closure on Fifth Street between Washington Street and Wabash Street from April 8th to the April 30th from 6 30 a.m. to 5 30 p.m. Good morning, Kyle with Woodruff and Sons. Uh, Asphalt plants aren't open yet, so that's the only reason for this extension. As soon as they open up, we already have them scheduled to come in, and we'll be done. So this is just, it, it could be any time during that period? Pretty much, yeah. yeah. Okay. Any further discussion? No, I'll entertain a motion. Make a motion to approve the request for <laughs> in Wabash from April 8th until April 30th from 6.30 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. I'll second that motion. So for discussion, I call for the vote. All those in favor, aye. Aye. Motion carries. <coughs> Next item on the agenda is a speed assessment by request from Councilman Sean Fitzpatrick to Fourth Ward to request a speed assessment on Village Road and Crestwood Drive in the Southgate neighborhood for safety concerns. Hi, good morning. Sean Fitzpatrick, Fourth Ward Councilman, uh, 230 Walnut Street. Um, it was brought to my attention by residents that um, there's excessive speed in the Southgate area. And uh, first off, I would like to uh, commend Captain Lineski and uh, Michigan City Police Department. Within 24 hours of my request to uh, this board, they installed the radar trailer and has it have increased patrols out there. And the uh, residents I've talked to are already pleased with that. So. Um, that's a start. Uh, okay. But um, further con discussion with the residents there, um, a lot of, this it's pretty densely populated out there, and there are a lot of small children playing. I witnessed some, like uh, last weekend, we had a really, one of the nicer days. Uh, they were out on bikes and playing with balls, and someone's barreling down the road at 30 plus speed uh, miles per hour. I mean, a kid goes after a ball, we know what happens. So um, the residents, um, um, Crestwood Village, even a couple on Glencoe have, uh, they said once the weather breaks, it's an ongoing thing and it's always been that way. So uh, they are asking that the speed uh, be reduced and I'm not sure how exactly how that process works, so I figured I'd start here. Okay. You got any concerns, Captain? Uh, as stated, I took the radar trailer out there last week and I sat out there a little myself and uh, I noticed there is there are some people speeding out there. Uh, I'm hoping that by placing the radar trailer out where it is now at Village and Southwind Drive, and then moving it to different locations throughout this month, hopefully we can just slow the traffic down to the posted 30 mile an hour speed limit. Uh, at this point, I would probably uh, recommend that we just uh, maybe hold off on reducing the speed limit. It's been my experience that just reducing the speed limit just increases the number of speeders because people aren't going to slow down; they'll continue to go out. And do 30 miles an hour if we raise if we lower it down to 20. So, at this point, I would just recommend that we continue to monitor it, monitor it throughout the month, and maybe I can report back at the first meeting of next month and see if our efforts have made any improvement. Okay. Right, thank you. I made a motion to defer till for 30 days. We'll bring it back. Make a motion to right. refer the uh, speed assessment to uh, Michigan City Police for their monitoring and review and uh, recommendation. I'll second that motion. Do you have a comment? She wanted to know if she wanted it on pending. Oh, yes. 
<laughs> Any further discussion? If not, call for the vote. All those in favor, aye. 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 Motion carries. <laughs> Next item on the agenda is horizontal drilling permit by Kevin Maxwell, BSM. Groups Intelligent Fiber is requesting a horizontal direction drilling permit to do directional bore for placement of their ground. Fiber optic cable project location East Street and Trail Creek Greenway. Morning, Spike Peller, Michigan City Engineer. Um, somehow they got the wrong application and uh, I can recommend that we uh, tentatively approve this uh, HDD uh, permit uh, with BSM gr uh, group. Uh, the fee would be, uh, they're putting in about uh, 700 feet of uh, cable. The fee is $70.50. I would also request that there has been a, uh, a letter from the sanitary district uh, requesting uh, information and and uh, and I don't know maybe Steve Stanford could uh, could address that but uh, uh, that letter and the documentation should be uh, attached to uh, the permit. Just real quick, um, so did they get the wrong application spike, or what were we just missing? Exhibit B, the full attachment. I think it's the wrong. You think it's the wrong one? Right. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, good morning, Steve Stanford, Michigan City Sanitary District. We have requested the applicant for a little extra information to verify that he'll maintain the separation and the crossing criteria for our sewer system in that area. We have not yet received that from the applicant. So would it be wise for this board to table it to the next meeting so that the proper application and information can be submitted? Yes. Thank you. Okay. So I was going to suggest. I'll entertain a motion to that effect. I'll make a motion to table the matter concerning the uh, BSM Group Intelligent Fiber Network horizontal drilling permit to bore at the East Street and Trail Creek Greenway area. No further discussion. I call for the vote. All those in favor, aye. aye. Motion carries. <coughs> Next item on the agenda is an agreement by and between the City of Michigan City by and through the Board of Works and Safety and Indiana Landmarks contract terms January 1, 2019 through December 31st. 2019 in the amount of $6,500. Uh, Mr. President, Indiana Landmarks is who our historic um, review commission utilizes for consulting. Uh, this contract is identical to contracts in the previous years and the amount is the same as well. Um, ask the board for approval of this contract. Okay. Any further discussion? No, I'll entertain a motion. Second that motion. No further discussion. I call for the vote. All those in favor, aye. Motion carries. Next item on the agenda is a request to purchase a vehicle by the Michigan City Police Department to purchase a 2019 Police Pursuit Dodge Charger through the state of Indiana's QPA and with Fletcher Chrysler Products to replace the 2018 Ford police and the interceptor sport utility that was involved in an accident and declared a total loss. Yes, sir. Good morning. Kevin Urbanzik, Assistant Chief Michigan City Police Department. I'm here to answer any questions that you might have in regards to that request. Any questions? No, that looks like everything is in order for the board okay. to approve. If there's no further discussion, I call for a vote. I'll make a uh, motion to approve the request to purchase the 2019 Police Pursuit uh, Dodge Charger through the state QPA uh, 
system from Fletcher Chrysler in the sum of $25,195. Support. No further discussion. I call for the vote. All those in favor, aye. Aye. Motion carries. Next item on the agenda is request for solicitation of bids approval of the bid package for the demolition of 609 Benton Street. I see down to building commissioner. You guys have the bid packet, right? The, this bid packet, it's a it's, uh, standard bid packet and I'd be happy to answer any questions you have. The board has already approved the demolition. This would be going out to seek the bids to actually um, retain a contractor to do the demo. So we're just approving the bid package or the solicitation of bids? Same thing, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a trick question this morning? No. <laughs> Is there any further discussion? If not, I'll entertain a motion. Make a motion to approve the request for solicitation of bids for, uh, from Sue Downs of Code Enforcement to solicit bids for the demo of 609 Benton Street. Second a motion. No further discussion. I call for the vote. All those in favor, aye. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is a Coordination contract from the Indiana Department of Transportation Local Public Agency Project Coordination with City of Michigan City for supplement number two for the Singing Sands Trail Phase 1 from Porter County Line to Michigan City. Uh, Mr. President, at our last board meeting, uh, this board has already approved this contract. Uh, what we discovered is when we uh, returned it to NDOT, they incorrectly had us labeled as supplement number one, and it should have been supplement number two, so all the paperwork is correct. So we're bringing it back in front of this board so your minutes are accurate um, to approve supplement number two. So you've already approved the dates, you've already approved the uh, release of the funding dates, and uh, we're just correcting the typo that was on the last okay. document. There's no further discussion. I'll entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to approve the request to correct the uh, matter of the Indiana Department of uh, Transportation uh, project coordination contract with the city of Michigan City to read supplement number two. Support. No further discussion. I call for the vote. All those in favor, aye. aye. Motion carries. <coughs> Next item on the agenda is Revolving Loan Modification by Clarence Holsey, Economic Development Corporation, on behalf of Zorn Brewery, requesting approval for the loan, revolving loan modification. Clarence Holsey, DC Director. Um, good morning. Good morning. I'm going to give a little background. Um, I know I had a couple questions that um, the board had asked for. I've been scrambling to get some answers. Um, we were trying to get some of the, uh, I guess one of the questions was the first note from Horizon. Um, unfortunately, two of the people who are, are, not, uh, are not allowing are on vacation. So we've been trying to get some more additional information on that, um, on that, on that forced mortgage. Um, this project began in 2015 and the, the company Zorn Real Estate they uh, bought the old uh, carriage house and I see but by now I guess it's the Zorn microbrewery um, they uh, invested probably over eight hundred thousand dollars in, in that project and they came to us um, to help them uh, bridge the, the loan they had with the bank um, so uh, we they came to us for 260 grand uh, at that point um, if you have in your package, I kind of laid it out what the original schedule was for the uh, loan amortization, and it was uh, $266,000, 120 payments. Uh, interest was uh, roughly in the bottom of $33,271. Uh, towards the end of 2016, they got into trouble. Um, they uh, were losing a lot of money. I think we came back to the board to get the interest only for three months. 
they had they were struggling to even pay that. Um, just from talking to Mr. Van Proven, who will be here at any minute, because I did text him, he was on, on his way. Um, they had to go back to the bank to restructure it, and I was trying to figure out what the, de the details were for you on, on that, which I don't have today. Uh, but they had to go back and uh, get their note restructured. Um, they struggled to pay to pay us in numerous meetings, phone calls, emails. Um, if you look in your packet, um, I have a list of the payments made to the city um, with the copies of the check. And so I've got that to, for background. Um, as of when they came to us to get their note modified, um, we start looking at, we, we call our loan processor or to um, give us what, they, what the outstanding payments were. And if you have on your sheet, you have the 320 note. As of 320 August, this is what was outstanding also the interest and so we took it to our uh, Roman loan committee who had a lot of issues with how the note was uh, being paid and so it was not it was not, not an easy decision they made to say look we, we got a couple choices here we can um, go to foreclosure but of course if we do that uh, we're in second position which means if the, the first lien holder gets the equity uh, in, on the property and we will spend a lot of money and not get anything plus we will shut, shut the business down we can modify the note but we, we're not going to do it on forgive the interest. We want to make sure the interest is paid up. So that was what they recommended uh, for us to, to move forward with. Uh, Mr. Van Proven agreed to pay up uh, all outstanding interest to date. And so that's what we're here today with 220000 plus interest. He's also asked for the, the note to be modified from 10 years to 15 years to lower his payments. And so that's within the new uh, schedule on, on the last page. You have those uh, four uh, pages. That's what, that's what that, that is, is the new modified schedule starting from today, if it was, if it was to be approved today. And so he's put up the uh, uh, roughly $18,000 in interest, and he's asking for us to start over. And so if you look on the bottom of that note, the new interest going forward like, has gone from 33000 plus to 43000 plus. So he's brought up his interest to date, and he's trying to start over to restart the clock, which would make the past note uh, interest only, for lack of a better um, um, explanation. Um, the project has its pros and cons. It's been a great project uh, in terms of, you know, he's done what, what he said he was going to do. Uh, he struggled along the way. Um, I must say he, he has not come to ask for any kind of tax abatement, which he's, he would he would have been entitled to uh, being within an enterprise zone. Um, he's also uh, not for any, asked for any kind of grants in terms of um, the UEZ has grants for internal um, modification and those type of stuff. He's also, um, like in, the, in that part of the, the area, their property values have gone up. He's actually changed the property value in that part of town. So there are some good things about the project. Um, so all we ask is to honor his, his request to move forward and to uh, figure a way that to make sure we can get him to to, um, to move forward and pay his note. One of the changes we made to the security note is this time he's also personally responsible for it. So that's one of the big changes we made, made to the new security note. He's uh, personally responsible to pay paying it off. So I'll take any questions from the board. So and this Mr. Van Proven is also here to answer any questions you may have. This is the second modification. Yes, yes. The first one was, was for three months only for uh, interest. Yeah, what happened after those three months? He struggled to pay in those three months. I mean, you look at the payment no, payment record. Yeah, um, it's hard for us to so, look at something that so. we just got. In front of well, I mean, I'm saying, you know, I'm just giving you the history of, of okay. where we've been. So. And it's been. And what's changed that would allow him to make the payments now? Before he, uh, before we we went to the verbal loan committee and here we asked for the past year's uh, financials, and so we saw where he's actually having, uh, he's actually making a profit, so he can actually start paying because there was no reason for us to come to you if we knew he was going to pay or couldn't pay. So. Is the Horizon Bank loan being refinanced? It was two years ago. Uh, a year and a half ago, because that's when he got into trouble. Was when the same time we came here to you in uh, late uh, 2016. 16, 16, 16, yeah, yeah. So, and so for those six months forward, that uh, he was having a lot of issues with the first note. Part of the loan process is, you know, we've got three outstanding notes, just, so, just for the background. We've got three outstanding loans, um, two more restaurants, one manufacturing. We are looking to change the rules so we don't do any more restaurants. As you guys read the business, you know that this is the highest feeling business in America is our restaurant. So we're getting out of that business. We're trying to uh, do more um, manufacturing, um, 
type on more business services. Well, just because we just got some of this information this morning, I would entertain motion to postpone it. Okay. No, for I another move, 30 days. Yes, I would move to postpone this due to the complexity of the matter and because we need additional information. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm here, President, if there's any questions you'd like to ask me directly. We don't know what to ask because we just got the information. So that's why we need to postpone. So we have time to look at what we got. And that's fine. During that time period, please email me uh, questions. I will try and get Horizon to respond to those three you asked me for. Right now, I don't have a connection. They're, mm -hmm. they're both on vacation, so I can't, I can't get it to you right now. But um, as soon as I get those um, uh, answers, I'll respond to all, all, all three of you, plus the attorney. Motion. I wait for a second. I'll second that motion then. And if there's no further discussion, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor, aye. Are you voting? Two ayes and one nay. It was postponed for 30 days until our first meeting in May. Excuse me. Uh, next item on the agenda is a resignation <coughs> driver operator Robert Yates of the Michigan City Fire Department has resigned effective March 24, 2019, and this is for informational purposes only. Next item on the agenda is a approval of the claims and payroll. Make a motion to approve the claims and payroll as presented. Support. For discussion, I call for the vote. All those in favor, aye. Aye. Okay. Next item on the agenda is unfinished business. First item on the uh, pending is a request for demolition at 212. Green Street by Phil Ream, and it was referred for the inspection department for a report back at this meeting. I, this uh, this particular building is, I, I agree, it is a derelict structure, but um, we did site them in 2016, and they, they cleaned the property up. It was sold then in 2017 to another owner who who went in and did some work and then in 2018 it was gutted and the newest owner started doing work. Unfortunately they have now basically walked away from it. It was on the commissioner sale. I haven't heard yet if it was sold at the commissioner sale. So although it is a derelict structure, it, it certainly is not one of the worst that we have in the city. We have far worse that we have to address. A limited number of funds with which to address them. So um, it, it, it is on a list to be observed and we work We'll work toward that goal, but it's just not one of the worst that we have out there. I'd be happy to answer any questions you have on it. Any further discussion, question? We keep it on the list or take it off? I would recommend taking it off. Yeah, we, we, have, we have all the houses that we can take down this Plan, year. It's planning, just not, the planning department always has the... Um, jurisdiction to issue any orders to repair and orders to demo. This board is the review body, so I don't absent Nothing them issuing. Yes, exactly. Okay. I'll entertain a motion to remove it. Make a motion to remove the matter of 212 <laughs> from the pending items list. Support. No further discussion. I call for a vote. All those in favor, aye. aye. Motion carried. Next item on the agenda is request for sidewalk replacement trash can at 2701 Franklin Street. Spike Keller, Michigan City Engineer. Yes, I just spoke with the mayor and he's approved the uh, uh, sidewalk work. Uh, as soon as we you know, get a, a contract out, uh, we can do that. It'll be done sometime this summer. Uh, regarding the trash can, I don't know if Central Services has one or where we can find one, but uh, I don't have one. Didn't we provide them downtown? We got. Mm -hmm. well, yeah, we did, but I think they're spoken for. Huh. Okay. 
Okay. So, um, if we get another haul of trash cans, then maybe we can set one out there. Okay. And I think this can be taken off the... I was going to suggest that. I'll entertain a motion to remove it then. Second. No further discussion. I call for a vote. All those in favor, aye. aye. Michigan City. Motion carries. Next item on the agenda was a request for parking signs by Kim and Jane Gross Civic Gardens at 228 West 8th Street. Traffic have any discussion? Come to the mic, please. I'm Kathy Jesse, and I'm the director at Women's Care Center at 732 Wabash Street. And um, we're a pregnancy resource center, and we're non for profit. Um, we serve many women and children through our um, center. Um, putting the 15-minute parking time frame there would really be a hardship to our pregnant women and children that we serve. Um, I, I don't know the woman's name that came up to me from Sevet Gardens, but we're now parking. All the staff parks on Wabash. So we're giving her a lot of parking space. But the 15-minute parking across the street from us would be very hard on our women and children. Um, we do ultrasounds uh, for women for free. We do classes where we would need more than 10 parking um, spaces uh, four days a week. Um, I just would like you to consider that for all of them. I... Don't know if you have any other questions that you would like to ask us. I don't have anything. Thank you for your input. Okay, thank you. It's Mike Pellin, Michigan City Engineer. I uh, discussed this with uh, uh, planning, and uh, they don't believe that uh, we should be putting in these 15-minute uh, parking uh, spaces. Uh, apparently, we have some... Um, I don't know when those were put in, but uh, it would be my recommendation to uh, deny this request. It would be my feeling that we need planning to come back to us with a recommendation on those that we've already approved. That I think we're start, we started a precedent. We can't continue, but that's just my opinion. Yes, sir. Uh, we, too, would recommend denial of the request. Obviously, we don't have the manpower to go out there and, and sit for 15 minutes to see if somebody's in violation of the time restrictions. And I know in the past, this board has always denied those requests. Okay. Craig Phillips, claim director. <clears throat> um, I would also, uh, uh, that's correct, the um, city engineer did consult with us on this matter. Um, and going along with the comment that Lieutenant Lenusky um, made, the um, only case where you can have effective um, enforcement of these types of parking standards is if you have parking enforcement personnel dedicated to parking enforcement. Some cities do that in various areas, but there's, there, those types of spaces are scattered throughout the entire kind of parking um, inventory within the downtown. And in our case, uh, we don't have that capability uh, in this city, and so yes, we would recommend uh, denial of the request, and we can reevaluate the ones that we have, but this is the request that's before us today, so. Okay. Any further discussion? I'll entertain a motion. Make a motion to deny the request for parking signs based on the recommendation of uh, Michigan City Police Department and Planning and Engineering. Second the motion. There's no further discussion. I call for the vote. All those in favor, aye. Aye. Carry. Next item on the agenda is request for street lights on Paz Road for pedestrian safety. You missed one. You missed one. Oh, there. I marked it off. Sorry. Uh, 
street light mid block, 300 block of Walker Street by Laverne Childs. Good morning again. Um, as I requested before, well, before I gave you the report, but I tried to get pictures so that I could show them to you. I was only able to get a video to show how dark it is on our block. And it's, it is really bad. And I went through the neighborhood and spoke with all of the residents in the neighborhood. Yes, a lot of them have had their vehicles broken into. The main reason why they have not reported it, some of them do not have insurance. The others do have insurance, but if they reported it, their deductible is so high that it wouldn't make sense for them to report that claim. So, uh, again, we are just requesting that we get a street light in the mid-block just to relieve some of that darkness in there because again the lights are only at the end of the corners from the 200 block there's a street light at that corner and then at the 400 block from the 300 block to the 400 block there's a street light at that corner but in the middle it's just total darkness at night okay. our captain Yes, after the last meeting, I was asked to pull the uh, crime stats for that area, specifically the 300 block of Walker. Uh, going back to about 2015, I found that we had three criminal mischief, criminal mischief reports, two accident reports, three theft reports, and two calls of suspicious activity. Uh, there were some other crimes that aren't directly related or wouldn't be improved by lighting that I didn't include. Um, if you're familiar with that area, there is a street light at the intersection of Tryon Street and Walker, and there's also a street light at the intersection of Vail and Walker. Um, the problem with this area is there's no utility poles that run down that street, so the installation of a, a mid-block street light would uh, entail quite a bit of an expense, I believe. I asked Spike to look it up. I don't know if Spike had a chance to get an estimate on how much it would cost to install a street light. But those are the crime stats that I found, and we would defer to the board on your judgment. Thank you. Mike Bell, Michigan City Engineer. I uh, looked up the uh, Michigan City Code, and basically uh, they, the code says put street lights at intersections, and if the, uh, uh, if the block is more than 600 feet long, then you can put one midway, which is what the 400 block is, it's it's greater than 600 feet. Uh, the 300 block is uh, much less than 600 feet. So I would uh, recommend that uh, this uh, request be denied. Okay. Any more discussion? <coughs> Excuse me. If not, I'll entertain a motion. Make a motion to deny the request for a mid-block street light on the 300 block of Walker Street. No further discussion. I call for the vote. All those in favor, aye. aye. Motion carried. Next item on the agenda is request by Sean Fitzpatrick. Street lights on Paz Road for pedestrian safety. We have a recommendation for installation. Oh, city engineers are looking at costs. <laughs> uh, Spike Peller, Michigan City Engineer. Uh, I've been working, trying to work with NIPSCO to find out what it would cost to uh, to put up some street lights here, uh, and so far they haven't uh, responded to me. I have uh, one of our consultants working on uh, lighting this stretch of of, of street, uh, of road, of Paws Road, and uh, they're trying to figure out, you know, the spacing and and stuff, and then hopefully we can find out what the uh, the cost would be. Now there's also a uh, uh, NERPC has a, uh, a funding uh, program which uh, the city has applied for, and one of the projects is to uh, redo Paz Road. So, regarding the sidewalk issue, that might be something that can be done uh, during this uh, reconstruction or resurfacing of Paz Road. It's supposed to, I believe, sometime. The money is available between uh, 2020 and, and 2024, but I think uh, it would not hurt to put in the uh, uh, the street lights now as soon as I can figure out how much it's going to cost us and, and where we should put them. Okay. 
So I would just recommend continuing. Bring it back in 30 days or just keep it on there? Uh, 30 days be fine. I should have something by then. Okay. Any further discussion? Not I'll entertain a motion. Second a motion. No further discussion. I call for the vote. All those in favor, aye. aye. Motion carried. Next item on the agenda is order to demolish Benton Street, which we've already done that. So we can take it off. Yes. Okay. Entertain a motion to remove it. I make a motion to remove the matter of <coughs> 609 Benton Street. Support. Yes. So for the discussion, I call for the vote. All those in favor, aye. 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 Motion carried. Next item on the agenda is a, a request to purchase city property at Fogarty Street, and we were waiting for valuations. So we did get the new appraisals. This property was last appraised uh, by two appraisal uh, companies in 2014. Um, unfortunately, the values have gone down slightly. Um, so in 2014, one of the appraisals said it was $95,500 and now it's $88,000. Um, the other appraisal in 2014 was $94,000 and right now they have it valued at $82,000. Um, I did talk to Mr. Phillips to see if this would change um, any of his prior recommendations uh, as to whether we should place this out for bid or not. He doesn't believe it should. It's, it's not that drastic, and uh, we don't see a viable use for the property uh, from the city perspective. So uh, with this board's permission, I will uh, prepare the, the bid documents uh, for your next meeting for approval, and we can take this off of the pending list. Okay. Any further discussion? No, you've heard the recommendation. Entertain a motion. Make a motion to remove the matter of the purchase of the city property on Fogarty Street from the pending items list and to address the matter of the, of the bid package at the next meeting. Support for discussion. I call for the vote. All those in favor, aye. aye. Motion carried. Next item is deferred to our next meeting. Anybody from the public wish to speak at this time? Uh, members of the board, I would just recommend that you consider uh, you reconsider the request for the street light in the 300 block of Walker Street, given the fact that there was some concern with regard to safety um, and the uh, the concerns that were mentioned by the resident, as well as the record that was. Uh, shown by the uh, police department of activity in the area. I would just recommend that you put that back on the agenda and reconsider it for the next meeting, table it and reconsider it for the next meeting. Okay. okay. I'll, a vote. I'll make a motion to uh, reconsider the uh, issue of the street light mid block, 300 block of Walker Street uh, by Laverne Childs um, per planning. Uh, Request that we revisit this and uh, address uh, at the next meeting. I'll second that motion. There's no further discussion. I call for the vote. All those in favor, aye. Aye. Motion carried. Anybody else from the public wish to speak at this time? Steve Stanford, Sanitary District Operations Manager. On Thursday last week, uh, the Sanitary District submitted a tardy request for a street closure the half block of Elk Street east of Jackson or stormwater drainage improvements. Okay. The motion is for or the request is from May for April first till April twenty sixth. The latest on that is the work is much more likely to begin on April eighth, possibly as early as the latter half of this week. So leave it at 
it'll be done in a month. Yes, that. sir. The, the the contractor's contract requires it. Okay. Any further discussion? Not I'll entertain a motion. Make a motion to approve the request for uh, closure of uh, in, uh, for improved storm drainage and installation of curb and guttery repaving of Elk. Uh, street from Jackson Street to the alley of Jackson Street from the period of April 1st through April 26th, uh, potentially. Support. Any further discussion? If not, we'll just take the vote. All those in favor, aye. Aye. Motion carries. Anybody else from the public wish to speak at this time? Not any board comments. If not, I'll entertain a motion for adjournment. Move to adjourn. For the discussion, I call for the vote. All those in favor, aye. Aye. Motion carries. We are adjourned.